the bills. J Dog back to answer more goddamn questions. Of course, since the dog does a goddamn video every single fucking day, you didn't uh, notice any uh, shit being missed videos or anything like that. But believe it or not, this is my first time recording a video in almost a week now because I was gone for the Evil War Fest. And I got, you saw, I got a bunch of fucking interviews there and the live videos. And uh, I don't know if I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do this. The two live sets I got, Sadistic Intent and uh, Tormentor, recorded by Goddamn Easy E. Um, pretty sure, if you don't see those go off, that means they came with dog shit quality. I haven't rewatched them yet. But I'm probably going to do those as the goddamn morning video, too. So I'm getting so goddamn behind here with work. It'll save me a couple more days. And some goddamn bullshit. These paid skis have been slowing down big time, brah, brah. Get them the fuck in, dog. Ain't working for free. And I need the goddamn topics. I woke that goddamn Sadistic Intense video today. It's uh, four, just after 4 o'clock today. And uh, it's well over 2,000 views. And the comments in there, it's just to see if, like, okay, will this give me any content? There's not a single goddamn thing in there to answer. Like, maybe one thing I could maybe kind of answer. It's just comments in there. So there's nothing to fucking talk about. So, yes, I need questions directly goddamn sent in. Granted, I have plenty to keep up. Some of these are kind of old. And, again, I have a feeling, like, one guy, uh, the guy that asked about the Meshuga question, he emailed me, hey, dog, did you get my question again? Brabras. Granted, he just did just seem to have some delays uh, just because uh, the other interviews, the cardiac arrests and shit like that. The interviews go first because I have to get them off my phone because it takes up storage. And maximum storage fills up. And I got shit coming up. I got the GB coming up. Chrissy and shit like that. I got stuff coming up. So I got to upload them and get them off my fucking phone to, you, to YouTube. And the interviews get the most goddamn views. So uh, I haven't been recording as goddamn many videos, so I have a decent amount of paid skis that built up. But it was over a fucking a week's goddamn thing. So I got fucking uh, two. These two are pretty old. Three, five. Yeah, like five in goddamn week's time. It's two minimum a fucking day. Fourteen. We're down by nine, homeboys. You do the goddamn math. Get them in. Man, I got a couple good ones, too, that, though. At least screwed up. Through. <laughs> Dog thinks are good ones that some of the fucking viewers might not like. But, oh, shit. Questions are questions, especially when they're goddamn paid skis. So, uh, with no goddamn further ado, fuck the first video I'm recording back in the office over a goddamn week. Back from goddamn evil war. Tired as fuck. Uh, Wadey al Majadi. Hey, question. I probably fucked your name up. No question. Just sharing. I recently attended an incantation concert in Marseille, a city in the south of France. Yeah, I'm where it is. Uh, the dog's actually been there twice, believe it or not. Been there, dog? Sure am, bra bra. Dog's been around. He's not just sitting in goddamn mama's basement fucking talking shit on goddamn YouTube. Mm -mm. He does stuff in this goddamn world. Leave your house, bra bra. Had a brief chat with John with John, and told him how much I loved his interview with Justin Horrible. <laughs> was he like, who? <laughs> he was quite surprised to hear that feedback. <laughs> He's probably thinking, who? <laughs> From someone this far away. Cheers, man. He's got me a fan on me. Hot as fucking balls in here. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, please. Uh, I mean, yeah, hell yeah, man. I, I thought that that was... That's not my favorite interview I did, but it's it's up there. It's, I thought it was a really good one, and John was very easy to interview because he was very, very talkative. Fucking, uh, as you saw right now, my Attila interview, that was easy as fuck. I thought that was going to be hard. I thought he was – I've seen interviews with him, so I, didn't, I knew he wasn't a complete stick up his ass, too evil to goddamn talk. Um, but it's like, holy shit. I mean, I asked one goddamn question. He goes on for 15 minutes, which I'm not complaining. I, people are like, oh, you bought in, you cut in on stuff. But the reason I do that, you do realize why. I, well, first off, sometimes I get a little overexcited, and I'm – Talk, talkative, but part of it is I can tell when they're kind of stalling. I do all the questions off the top of my head for the most part, with the exception of Corpse Grinder, and I got a list for goddamn GB too because I actually don't want to forget shit. Um, I kind of go to the next question I'm asking when I feel they're kind of stalling because I don't want to forget what the fuck I'm going to ask, and then there's just just silence. So well, there we can just go on and on. Fine by me. Just uh, let the dog take a goddamn coffee break. Just keep on talking, homeboy. You're making it easy for me. Otherwise, I'm coming up with all the shit off the top of my goddamn head. Tried to interview Demon C as well and uh, Abysmal Lord. Uh, both bands were too goddamn evil to come on camera. Too cavalt, too tough. I tried, goddamn it. Would have been would have been a banger. Didn't work out. Uh, Eric Uder Molin. Pain question. You can put that in there too. Pain question. It says thoughts and tips on how to maintain joint health. Oh, oh, oh. Goddamn gym question and connective tissue for weightlifters and athletes. Supplements, foods to eat. 
Okay, well, I'll try to keep it quick because people hate these goddamn questions. And uh, for starters, make sure there's no goddamn actual damage to the joint. If you're 50 years old and you're like, oh, my elbow's been killing me for the last 10 goddamn years or whatever joint's killing me for the last 10 goddamn years, you know, I've been lifting for 30 years. You probably have degeneration of the joint. There ain't nothing that's going to fix that other than goddamn surgery. Like, say, your knees or something, there's no cartilage left. Nothing's going to fix that shit. So keep that in fucking mind. But if you're a goddamn young buck and you just got some tennis elbow or sore shoulder, uh, number one, make sure you're doing your goddamn shit correct, lifting correctly, uh, full range of motion, and a, a pause out of the goddamn stretch, which is where the most goddamn muscle growth, growth comes, is the pause out of the stretch when you lift out of that is where the most hypertrophy comes from. I love these dumbasses that are just bouncing the weight, doing it really fast, and uh, or, or you know, deadlifts bouncing them off the floor. Like, what are you doing, dude? You look like a complete fucking moron. You realize you don't, you're you're complete. <laughs> Whatever, dude. <laughs> you look like a dumbass monkey. You don't even know what the fuck you're doing. Um, so make sure you're doing your shit left, right. Uh, make sure you're not overdoing the exercises. I mean, two to three times a week, week per week max a lift, uh, unless you're doing low volume. Uh, yeah, if you're doing low volume, you can get away with two, maybe three times. If you're doing higher volume, 10 sets plus per uh, body part, then once a week, that's all you're going to recover from. Otherwise, it's going to be overuse of the joint. So basically, you throwing some supplements or drugs at it, it's not going to fix the problem. The problem is because you're overuse. So make sure those two things are set first because it's more than likely one of those three things I just said, your age, degeneration of the joints, uh, dog shit form, or just overuse of the joint, more than likely that's what's, that's what's causing the problem. You don't need anything for it. However, these things are definitely good for joints and connective tissue that's going to keep them healthy over the years as you lift, uh, keeping overall body inflammation down. There's nothing better than a goddamn baby aspirin, the 81 milligrams. There's no negative effects whatsoever. That's why it's called a baby aspirin. For example, NSAIDs, like ibuprofen and stuff like that, yes, they are harsh on the kidneys primarily. They will fuck your kidneys up if you abuse them. Um, and they're hard on the stomach line. However, not at the 81 milligram dose. That is why a baby can even take them. There is no negative effects on the stomach lining or the kidneys whatsoever, even on a baby. And yet, even in adults, they still get... Uh, systemic inflammation reduction and all the health benefits and it's a shitload. It's literally the best supplement you can put in your body. So all you guys taking multivitamins and stuff, which I do too, fish oil, everything. If you were to compare and contrast, if you can only take one thing, just going going to goddamn your grocery store and getting a 300 tablet Bayer baby aspirin, 81 milligrams, is going to be do you better than anything. Nobody's going to tell you this, too. Why not? It's $20 for 300 pills. That's almost almost $20 for a year goddamn supply. So I take that goddamn year round. You, liver enzymes, everything, you'll see do not go up. It does not affect that. It is, this is very well fucking known. You can use cur curcumin and shit like that, too. Just get your C-reactive protein measured. If it's low, then don't, I don't even see the need for it. I, like, I, never, I used to take the curcumin. I'm just like, my C-reactive protein is always well under 1. It's like 0 0.02 sets your total systemic body inflammation, one of the most important health markers. So if that's law, I would just stick with the baby goddamn aspirin. Um, high dose fish oil will help. That'll help with, you know, skin, hair, nails, brain, heart, connective tissue, high dose fish oil. Uh, it, if just at least 5,000 milligrams per day. So do the math. Look at what you're going to take. What the fuck? Mine are 500 milligrams. Yeah, you should be taking 10 of those a day. Um, that's the doses that are going to fucking do shit. So people are like, ah, I know I took it and didn't do anything. I, I look at it, they got a Walmart goddamn brand, which is probably fine. I look at it, it's literally 500 milligrams. How many do you take these a day? I take one a day. That's literally, it's like just throw in the garbage. It's literally going to do nothing. That, that, that's just so low that it's literally going to do nothing. That's like fucking taking a handful of sand and throwing it on the beach and be like, there's more sand on the beach. All right, well, dude, it's so goddamn minute, you're not going to notice. Um, uh, MSM, glucosamine, those. I've known the show, and I think it's a, with a dose is 3,000 milligrams of each um, a, a collagen protein. That's going to help. There is some studies that say it's kind of useless. However, I take it, but uh, the, the rule of thumb is, though, it's 20 grams per day. So most of the tubs you see out there is uh, 10, around 9 to 10 grams, some are 12 grams of collagen. Uh, make sure you're getting at least 20 grams a day if you want to go Real hardcore, not hardcore, but like most bang for your buck, you can go to 30. So you might be taking three scoops of what your shit. Oh, what the fuck? I'm out in 10 days. Yeah, well, that's 
part of the reason like people think supplements and shit don't work, like natural supplements, a lot of them do, is because you're not taking nearly enough. The dose is too goddamn low. But they sell it to you because if they're going to sell it like that, they're going to sell way, way, way less because people are going to buy it. Because now, oh, shit, I got to buy three tubs per month. This is kind of, ah, fuck, too expensive. Well, that's what's going to give you the goddamn benefits. Um, as far as, oh, high, vitamin C. Vitamin C helps with uh, joint connective tissue. So, uh, I mean, if you're having problems, you can ramp it up to about 3,000 milligrams per day. Other than that, that's probably about it for about supplements. And then uh, if you're using uh, pharmacology, any drugs, uh, growth hormone is going to be the best. Uh, that's going to help with joints, connective tissue. Uh, if you're a woman, two IUs before two IUs a day before bed. If you're a man, four IUs. If you're going to balls out, you could uh, use the healing peptides, which those are actually legal, semi-legal. You can get them. Uh, the BPC-157 TB500, you can combine that with the growth hormone. Um, those, um, I mean, a lot of people consider those goddamn miracles. I'll be honest, I've used them. I didn't know it was a goddamn thing. Um, so who the fuck knows? But I know guys that, that are actually, I trust their fucking word, people I know in person. They're, they're, they say it's the biggest goddamn game changer of all time. Uh, so I do believe it does work. The, the, all the studies show and shit it does. It's like, I didn't know it's anything. I've tried it a few different times. But uh, you can give that a goddamn shot. Uh, if you're using androgens and you're prescribed it or not, you're going fucking backdoor guy, <laughs> back alley. Um, obviously, people that are in the know know uh, what do you call it DECA, dangelone deconate that uh, that doesn't heal the joints, but it provides lubrication to the goddamn joints. That's why a lot of powerlifters love it and wrestlers love it too. But this is something like, people don't know, and I know this from inside. What about a good buddy of mine who was a professional fucking wrestler, like good buddy, like used to hang out with him all the time, like literally weekly. Um, he was in the WWE and uh, a common thing, you know how you like there's TRT, you guys are on test or they just stay on test year round. They're, they'd stay on testosterone a decade year round and it's specifically for the joints. So you can give that a shot. Um, if you're already using, shit, hell, if you, you, if you have a good goddamn clinic, you might be able to get your doctor to prescribe it for you too. If you're getting prescribed a TRT, and then also, too, a lot of people don't realize it, too. You can also get prescribed and say, well, actually, I think they just banned in the U.S., but some labs or doctors are kind of doing the work around on it. Uh, Anivar actually helps with the uh, joints as well. So with all the natural soaps, that's the raw ingredients. And then the goddamn, uh, the androgens, those are the power tools to, a fil to a sil fil you know, facilitate, goddamn, can't get the goddamn word out, facilitate the goddamn, uh, process to make it heal much, 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 much faster. Throw that in. That's your superhuman combo. Uh, but again, if, if it's just, you're fucking it up because you're doing the first three things I said, then you're just throwing a goddamn band-aid in it. It's never going to fucking heal at all. So keep that goddamn mind. But those are your, uh, those are your goddamn, uh, the tools that you use as far as that would help with joints. That's goddamn hate ski. Those goddamn order questions go to the back of the line. Uh, Austin Thaxton. Paid question. Nothing less Nothing less than 20 bills. Yeah, he did send 20 USD. My God, mm -hmm. make it up for this goddamn drought. Put me down for an XL for the Dead by a Dog Fest shirt. Pretty sure I do get you marked out, homeboy. I got this. Let's see what we got. I got you marked. Got little doggy shirts. Dog shirt list. Uh, Austin Thaxton. Yep, got you down. Shit, I got about fucking... Damn, about a good good 20 fucking dog shirts fucking marked down. Pretty, already accounted for. Assuming everybody pulls goddamn through. Said they are, but never know. Uh, already got my my ticket, goddammit. That's what I'd like to fucking hear. Uh, where are you from, homeboy? Uh, he said, who are your top three body He says, oh, shit, a goddamn another gym question. Holy fuck, you'd be pissing these fuckers off in the comments. Mine would be Phil Heath, 2011 uh, Olympia win. Lee Priest, 2002 Olympia. Flex Wheeler, 1999 Olympia. Thanks for telling Dude, that's pretty much, for the most part, mine, with the exception. I mean, I didn't use specific years, but when people ask who my, just physique-wise, who are my favorite bodybuilders, it's those three. My top bodybuilders, it's those three, plus Kevin Leveroni and Sean Ray. Physique was. Those were my favorites. Now, guys like, you know, Ronnie and Dory and shit like that, I like their work ethic, but that wasn't like my favorite type of physique, so to say. Um, 
If I had to pick just one, it'd probably be Flex Wheeler. I mean, I think that's probably the greatest fucking league of all fucking time, in my goddamn opinion. Um, so, yeah, I mean, just copy and paste what the dog said, goddamn it. Because <laughs> most people say Ronnie and shit like that. It's like, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I think people just saying that by default. It's like he was impressive as fuck. And uh, you'd argue the goddamn Michael Jordan bodybuilding. But, I mean, the, the, the really distended stomach and just, I mean, it's not even the, I don't know. It's not, not how I want to look personally. I think Flex Wheeler is way, way, way better. But I can see why Ronnie won just because the sheer just fucking freak factor. And I think people just throw that name out there by default just because they want to look good. Carlos Torres, paid question. AJ Dog, quick training question. God damn. <laughs> paid skis and their gym questions. Man, you guys fucking might, you might be signing out. Happy might be signing out on this goddamn entire video. Uh, I've been strength training three times a week, and I've noticed I no longer get sore after my training sessions. Well, that's good. It, it, as long as you're not training like a pussy. Even a day or two afterwards, I still feel like I'm pushing my sets hard. With decent weight and applying progressive overload, full arm extension, slow eccentric movements, and reps ranging from 10 to 15 usually. After my sessions, my muscles still feel fatigued, but the soreness is not there like it used to be. Am I still making progress in the gains if no soreness is present? You don't need to be sore to make gains. That's completely well, very well known. Should I extend my three-day training a week to more days? Uh, if you're able to do more than three days of the same body part per week, you're definitely training like a pussy. There's no way... You should be able to recover more than that. That is like the, the maximum. That, that's fucking pushing it. Should I make the, the intensity higher for my sessions? You, you, that should be a, you should be as high as it should be 100% every single time, or else what the fuck are you even going to gym for? Or is this part, just part of the process? Any advice is much appreciated. Cheers, bro, bro. Uh, the way I put this way, are you, are you getting stronger? At like literally every. You're not going to be. I'm so sick of these fucking clowns. Like, when they talk about their. Uh, yeah, I have my log book and shit like that. Don't be wrong. I did a log book for like almost 10 goddamn years straight. Just got to the point where you just memorize it. I've done it for so goddamn long. Um, and they're like, yeah, you should always be beating. Well, Dorian would say that shit too. You should always be beating your log. You're not going to beat it every week. If you're going to beat it every week, eventually, dude, if you're just training for 10 years, you should be benching a thousand fucking pounds. And nobody's goddamn doing that shit. Now are they? Curling fucking 405 on the barbell. Like nobody's doing that. So you're not going to get stronger every goddamn week. So God, the shit. I'm so sick of hearing that. It's fucking uh, Dorian Hamilton, or not Hamilton, it was a Dorian uh, Awood, or whatever that guy's name is, too. He preaches that shit where he makes it sound. He doesn't say it, but it's highly insinuated. You should get stronger every week. Not, I mean, no, dude. Maybe if you're a newbie or trainee, or you just fucking jumped on a cycle and you haven't been on shit, okay, maybe, yeah, that's going to last six to eight weeks, but it's going to plat. You're going to eventually hit a sticking point. I'm so sick of hearing that. It's fucking beyond goddamn annoying. Who the fuck keeps getting stronger every week for years on end? Now, maybe there's some genetic freak like Ronnie or something, but fuck off. You ain't Ronnie, goddamn it. Um, but yeah, if you're getting stronger, like regularly, at least every month, like you're going up five pounds on, on the major lifts and for the same amount of reps, I wouldn't worry about it. Um, if you, but if you're just doing the same goddamn weight and you're stopping three reps fucking till failure or you're just setting it down because you got a little tuckered out, it, you're just training like a bitch and that's how you're not sore. Which is extremely possible because that's 90 goddamn percent of the people in the gym. Uh, go back to these goddamn order questions. That was the last of paid skis. I thought I had one more, but no, it's like an order question. Uh, Simon uh, Paul Kovoski, goddamn order question. Uh, have you ever listened to Curtain Wall? Never heard of him. It may possibly be the most poser band known to man. People on TikTok dancing in the forest while listening to it. That's not black metal, Rob. Rob, do they so curtain wall? That doesn't even sound like black metal. So curtain wall, corner fucking uh, Simon, biggest poser goddamn band on TikTok. Not, not to mention, dude. What the, as far as I'm concerned, if you're a true goddamn black metal, you're not on goddamn TikTok, dude. That's I've never even seen that dumbass shit in my life. That that, that scream, twelve year old girl, dear Kowalski, J Dog, with all the talk of roughness and toughness of channel, do you have any stories about any legitimate tough guys in the metal scene? And are any of them in any bands? Nobody ever fucking met. But again, it depends on what your goddamn definition of a tough guy. A, a fucking guy that gets drunk at shows and starts fights. That's not a tough guy. Or a guy that has a short fuse. Hey, I don't take no crap. You say one little thing. He punches you in the face. You got to walk on eggshells worrying about what you're going to say about him. Generally speaking, I think it's what people look like as tough guys. I'm like, it's not a tough guy, dude. That's just a fucking asshole. Um, yeah, I met those. I met those guys. And I, I honestly, that's probably my most hated fucking people to be around. Where you just... 
you have to kind of walk on eggshells, and I know some. You have to walk on eggshells about what to say because you don't know how they're going to fucking react. Uh, that is, yeah, without a doubt, my most hated person to be around. I avoid them like the fucking play, want them nowhere near me. Um, legitimate tough guys. Generally speaking, dude, the toughest fucking guys you uh, that you don't know because they don't go around advertising. They don't start. They don't. They don't talk like it's just when it's time to fucking uh, throw down. It's time to uh, mean business, or they have to just confront you like a man. I'm not talking, talking about fighting. Confront you like a man. They don't bitch up. They'll come to your face and tell you what they have to say to your fucking face, not behind your back. That's fucking bitch shit. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's something there, uh, but I, I never really because I, I don't sit there and talk shit about people behind their back. Now, I may I may goof around and talk about somebody's ass, but talking shit to me is making stuff up or throwing out accusations that you're just pulling out of your goddamn ass. We talk shit on the channel. Talk shit on the channel. First off, that's not that is technically it's thrown out to the whole goddamn world. So, and I'm at every goddamn show, so it technically is still to their goddamn face because they can see it, they can confront me. Not one of these bitch boys has that though, yet though. Um, me, I don't sit there. It's not talking shit if it's the truth. If you sit there and say like, let's say you had an uncle or something, he did whatever he did and he went to jail, and you're telling the story to a friend or something, he finds it, dude, you're talking shit about me. That's what you did, dude. If you call that talk, <laughs> that's on you, dude. You're the one that did it. <laughs> I was just telling him what the fuck happened. I bet in that scenario, and I think some some of you are talking shit. That <laughs> you actually did it. <laughs> that ain't talking shit, bro. Me talking shit and be like, man, you know, Uncle Bobby, man, he's on the corner sucking dick for twenty dollars, and he's Uncle Bobby's never sucked a dick in his life. Nonetheless, I'm the goddamn on the corner for twenty bucks. That's talking shit. You're making shit up. Huge fucking difference. Tell him he got a fucking DUI, wrecked two cars, and did 30 goddamn days in jail. Probably should have went longer. This is not your story, by the way, but I'm just using an example. And you go and you get, and I go and tell Big D in a store, and he finds out I told Big D. That's, that's not me talking shit. That's happened. So, and I would tell him straight to his face. Yeah, well, that, 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 if you got a problem with it, don't do stupid shit, bra bra. <laughs> I will tell you. He asked, I told him. The uh, last one, goddamn it, the quickie. Or, or Jordan Lloyd, order question. What does the dog think of the Ramones? Oh, I like them. Are there songs I like by them? I like about 25 total songs, uh, seems like. Cause I, 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 I didn't officially add it up, but long story, kind of did. Um, but they got some bad ones. Superman, dude, get the fuck out of here. That blows the fucking cock. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I like them. It's, uh, you know, one of the original first punk bands. Not saying the first. I mean, who's the, who's the first punk band? Sex Pistols? Probably something along those lines. And I guess that's a that's department of A2, just like Death Ball, I guess. But I don't punch on punks in my goddamn wheelhouse. Somebody can school me on that. But uh, yeah, I definitely do like some of our own songs, no doubt about it. Come to the